And with the 23rd pick overall in the 2022 NFL Draft, the Arizona Cardinals select... Well, that's why you guys are assembled here today. Our esteemed panel of Cardinals insiders, Craig Grealu, Felipe Corral Jr., Darren Urban, Pauly Primer. Yes, our annual draft primer talking Cardinals defense. Y'all have notes. You look ready to go. Darren, where are the Cardinals going? What would be the priority, you think, on the defensive side of the ball? Well, Paul, you and I have talked about this many, many times. Yes. Because if I had to make a list of what the priorities the Cardinals have right now would be edge rusher, edge rusher, edge rusher, and then a big drop to everything else. I, I think after Chandler Jones left, uh, edge rusher is something that they really need to look carefully at. Now at 23, it's a difficult kind of process because while this draft is deep in edge rushers by many people's accounts, at 23, you're not going to get a, a Nick Boza or a Joey Boza or Khalil Mack or anybody. You're going to be taking a little bit of a risk with whoever's there, but it is a position of need. I mean, you talk about getting rookie quarterbacks under contract, right? What about a rookie edge rusher on a rookie contract? Think about it. I mean, you have T.J. Watt making $28 million a year. Uh, you know, you have Joey Bosa, $27 million a year. I mean, 32- and 33-year-old pass rushers and Chandler Jones and Von Miller are getting 17 to 18 a year. I mean, you got to think that's got to be the priority for the Cardinals on the defensive side of the ball. Just look at the history of this team drafting an outside linebacker slash edge rusher. Marcus Golden was the last legit edge rusher, and that was 2015, to your point, Paul. Now, all of a sudden, not only do you have the four years, but that fifth-year option, and you're looking for someone. It doesn't need to be 12, 13 sacks, but double digits should be the goal or just get into the backfield to affect that opposing quarterback in the offense a little bit. And right now, you need someone opposite Marcus Golden. He can't do it all by himself, and right now, that's all you've got. Is that realistic in number 23, Felipe? What do you think? Well, Paul, can I put my GM hat on real quick? Oh, that's why you're here. I mean, is there is there a potential to trade that pick? You know, we've seen Kime uh, be creative when trading up in drafts. You know, we saw it when he traded up to number 10 in the first round. He did it last year when he selected Marco Wilson uh, in the fourth round. So there's a lot of talent. Like like you said, Darren, it's, it's a deep draft, especially on that defensive side of the ball. But, hey, why not risk it, take high risk, high reward, and get – you know, some elite guys at that position. It'll be it'll be interesting to see if that's a possibility. I I, I would think at, at this point, even the guys that could be there at 23, like uh, uh, Purdue's uh, George uh, Kafalnakis or or the Minnesota kid Boyu Mafe, um, you know, are, are those guys even going to be there? Because the the problem is everybody gets pushed up. You know, you're you're going to have these elite guys going top 10. So another guy who you would think would be a 23rd pick kind of talent could end up being going at 18 or 19 and the other problem is is if you look at the draft picks or the teams that are drafting ahead of them a lot of the teams right in front of the Cardinals need wide receiver which we already talked about yep. the offensive primer and edge rusher which the Cardinals need so that that makes it tougher yeah and it's not a first round that's loaded with quarterbacks you can't count on five quarterbacks going before the cardinals pick at number 23 so to felipe's point if we're all still waiting for the splash move this offseason right if you're still waiting for steve kime to go off the high dive and scream cannonball well maybe he trades up and he goes after one of these guys if not Carl Loftus with the relentless motor from Purdue, a guy who played water polo, right? That's his background, so he has this explosive leg strength. That's what he attributes it to. Uh, yeah, Boye Mafe from Minnesota. He was the guy who was a senior bowl player of the game, could be an edge rusher. And then if they want to go round two, maybe, a guy who got hurt at his pro day from Michigan, right? David, David Ojabo, I mean, he's got all the athleticism, 6'4", 250, 4'5", 540. But he tore his Achilles, so maybe, just maybe, if you're still hurting for a pass rusher in round two or three, he might be on the board. I think that might be a little bit too long of a wait as far as round two. And then the other thing, tearing your Achilles, is he even going to be available in 2022? I mean, that would be a now all of a sudden you've drafted someone that you don't have this season where this season is important that you're looking long term. That's what the draft is for, yes. But I think there's such an emphasis on making the right selections, first round, second round, to be available and contribute, make an impact right now. How about cornerback? We know the Cardinals signed Jeff Gladney, former first round pick 2020, 
formerly of the Vikings. Okay, but do you think there's still a need, a want at cornerback in the first round, Felipe? We've all seen the quarterbacks on the Cardinals' schedule, right? Beyond Matthew Stafford, they got Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes, Russell Wilson, Justin Herbert. Do they go corner maybe in round one? I mean, I think that's a possibility, especially at that 23rd pick, right? If you're not going to trade up and get a guy like Jermaine Johnson who can make an immediate impact at that edge rushing position, you know, you can go with uh, Kyler Gordon, Trent McDuffie from Washington. I, I feel like they have a good reputation, at least the Cardinals do. You know, you already saw Buda Baker come out of there. You obviously have Byron Murphy in that secondary, but I mean, why not go with the Kyler Gordon or uh, Trent McDuffie? I mean, you talked about the quarterbacks they're going to face this year, but you know, they're going to face guys like Brandon Ayuk, Debo Samuel, Allen Robinson, Cooper Cup, and then obviously we know the situation with the Seahawks, but they still got to respect guys like DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. So I think that cornerback is a, is a good position. I think Trent McDuffie specifically is a good cover corner, which gives Byron Murphy that flexibility to truly go back to that slot corner position where I feel like we all know he's most comfortable. The other name we hear associated with the Cardinals a lot at 23, according to the mock drafts, would be the kid out of Clemson, Andrew Booth, six foot, 194. He's known to be a physical corner, high IQ, uh, talent and tools, according to Bucky Brooks. What do you think? Is that feasible at 23, Craig? If you don't go edge rusher, you better have some cornerbacks, multiple cornerbacks. You're going to need at least three. Everyone talks about having three starting cornerbacks based off the quarterbacks that you face, the wide receivers you face. So I do think if you don't go edge rusher, you have to go cornerback because now all of a sudden those quarterbacks are having more time in the pocket. You know, those cover guys, that's more time for them to kind of figure out what to do. So I wouldn't mind whether it's day one or day two to kind of knock out one of those two positions. I'm like these guys. I, I, I like the idea of having another cornerback. You don't know what Jeff Gladney is going to give you. You have some hopes. He was a first round pick once upon a time, but he wasn't in football last year. You obviously know what you have in Byron Murphy. Uh, you like some of the things that Marco Wilson did last year. I think he hit a little bit of a wall. Uh, and, and there's other possibilities in terms of bringing in a veteran uh, if you don't necessarily draft the guy. And if they really want one of those corners, you know, maybe they come up a little bit. It doesn't cost you too much. Every one of those corners will hit. They're physical. They come downhill, which is the MO of the Cardinals secondary right now. You know, Vance Joseph loves those corners who can tackle. So now if you want to get the most out of your last two first round picks in Isaiah Simmons and Zayvon Collins, do you get a run plugging massive defensive tackle that can keep those offensive linemen off the inside backers. Oh, I don't know, maybe a Jordan Davis from Georgia. We all saw him in the championship game in the NCAA, right? When you're in a Georgia-Alabama game and you stand out because of your size, you know you're a freak. 6'6", 341, Jordan Davis. Well, not only him, but his teammate, Devontae Wyatt, as well. If you can plug someone, everyone wants the next Aaron Donald. That's not going to happen, but if you can find someone to clog the middle of that offensive line, make it a little bit more difficult, because what did we talk about all last season? Run defense. Got to be able to stop the run. This team was 20th overall, 26 as far as yards per carry. There's a lot Wasn't of needs. It six times the Cardinals gave up 150 yards rushing or more, and it became more of an issue later in the season. I, to me, the, the only issue I have with this, and it, again, 23, I feel like you have a lot more leeway to do some things because it's not a higher pick. When you're taking a guy like a Jordan Davis, if he falls that far, and you're saying, we're going to spend this first round pick on a guy that probably is only going to be a two down player for you, that's, I think, something you have to consider because he's going to come off the field in passing downs and in all probability, and, and is he making enough of an impact for you in that case? But he does make your edge rushers better, right? If you can get that disruptive interior defensive lineman who, who can they have to account for, maybe even double team, something the Cardinals really haven't had. Although when J.J. Watt was on the field and was healthy, you saw the difference in the Cardinals' pass rush. But that's got to be a consideration if you're Steve Kime. Well, I think it's a, it's a good risk, right? If he is going to be a, a two-down guy, I mean, at least put your – defense in a position of being a third and long situation that gives your secondary to play a lot of nickel and situations, especially when you talk about some of the offenses you're facing, right? Matthew Stafford, you know that they thrive in play action. The 49ers and Kyle Shanahan, they thrive in those first uh, two downs. So, you know, it's not bad having a disruptive defensive lineman. And as Craig mentioned, Devontae Wyatt, uh, he is considered an every down defensive lineman, supposedly the quickest first step uh, you know, of anyone at the Combine. And by the way, 25% of the players invited to the Combine were from the SEC. How about that? Uh, any other needs, Darren? Anything else on defense that we're missing beyond those three position groups? I mean, they've spent 
picks in the first round an inside linebacker, so do you take one later? I mean, I definitely could see them spending one of those late round picks on a second flyer edge rusher. If Hopefully you get one early, but maybe another one that could be a project. I could, I could see that. Anything else, Greg? I just think it's edge rusher, to Darren's point, edge rusher, maybe a couple of different pass rushers, maybe a couple of corners. Those would be my top priorities as far as the defense is concerned. I, re I remembered one. Not really defense, but kind of defense. What about the punter from San Diego State? Punter, absolutely. You Punting got like 60 yards. I mean, I think Steve Kime would, a Boers would, would never want to draft a punter, but he's one guy that kind of catches I figure that would be Paul that would bring a punter and special no. teams up. That brings us full circle. You got to get a punter on a rookie contract. You know, some of the top punters are getting like three, four million dollars a year, so it makes cap sense, does it not? A field position, right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. All right. So our only rule here is uh, all opinions your own, own your opinion. There you go. There's our draft primer 2022, the defensive edition.